These are the plaintiffs, Wanda and James. Wanda says her 26-year-old son took their dog, Taffy, for a walk. And the defendants, two pit bulls who were off-leash, attacked Taffy, and one of them grabbed her and ran away with her in his mouth down the block. Her dog has suffered greatly. Her son was also injured in the scuffle. And they're here suing the irresponsible defendant for the $3,761.86 they're owed. This is the defendant, Lisa Murph. She says the plaintiff's dog wasn't on a leash. And when she came up to her front stoop, her dog went into protection mode. Who walks a poodle with no leash in front of a house with two pit bulls? Bottom line, this attack wasn't her fault, and she owes nothing. She's accused of not taking responsibility. The defendant has bought a candle suit for $2,580 for vet bills, fines, and pain and suffering. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiffs say that the defendant's pit bull was somehow allowed to escape and viciously attack their dog, Taffy. But the defendant says hogwash. The plaintiff's dog was not on a leash and her dogs protected themselves. End of story. It's the case of that is the pits. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Mr. James, it was you who was walking the dog, correct? Yes. And what was the name of the dog? Taffy. And what kind of a dog is Taffy? A Bishapu. Okay. So were you walking her on a leash or off of a leash? On. Uh, when I was returning home, I got one house down. I let her off the leash. And when I did, Lisa's dogs came out. She ran out. They ran down the steps off the porch. Uh, the female dog grabbed her by the neck. I was trying to protect her. I hit the, I hit the dog. And that's when her the female let go. Then that's when the male came, uh, came grabbed her, and took up our neighbor's steps. Uh, as I was protecting Tavi from the male, I was uh, I fell to the ground trying to protect her. How did you fall to the ground? I was falling full. Uh, I was falling forward, trying to uh, get Tavi from away from her. And when I did, okay, uh, I scraped I scraped my arm and my knee. And when I got away from her, away from her uh, dogs, I came in and told my mom the situation. All right. Now, I, I, do you live in that house? Yes. Ms. Wanda, were you a witness to any of this stuff? No, I was not. Okay. So, Mr. James, the the male dog takes Taffy and brings Taffy to some other neighbor's front porch or to Lisa's front porch? To somebody else's porch, to where the female dog took her down the street. And once the, uh, I was hitting the female dog, she, my Taffy was able to get away. Then the male came, grabbed her, and took her up uh, to where the female dog let her off, uh, let her go in. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, so, Ms. Wanda, what happened to Taffy? How do you first learn that something bad happened? James was banging on the door, say, yelling, did you hear me screaming for help? Lisa's dog attacked Taffy. And uh, at that point, I was able to observe puncture wounds, but she wasn't actively bleeding. After that, Lisa came over. Uh, she smelled of alcohol. Her Voice was slurred. So, and then my other son, JT, was very upset and angry. He yelled at her, and I decided at that point nothing would get resolved because of his anger and her perceived intoxication. So, she did tell me that she would take me to the vet to have Taffy treated the next morning, which she did do. Uh, we went to the SPCA. They wouldn't treat her. They did. They said that they didn't treat that type of those types of wounds. So then she took me to another veterinarian's office, which was too expensive. And at that point, she said she had also given me uh, sixty dollars, and she said that I won't be giving you any more money. I can't afford it. And at that point, uh, I said, Well, just let me out of your car. So we got out of the car. We took a taffy. We walked to another veterinarian's office that was nearby. And I also asked her if she would be willing to make payment uh, pay installments because both our dogs were off leash, uh, which is customary, which I know is the leash laws that we shouldn't. But uh, practically 
in front of our door, we would take her off the leash. I know, but so my, you know what? My husband the, does that, and I yell at him all the time. I know, because you want to see them run a little, and you want to see them happy, and you want to see them run to their homes. But you know what? That's kind of, you know, you, you, you it's a risk when you do that. I don't think that in this case it would have made a difference other than that you also were off leash. So that's going to have a legal bearing in this case. But I don't think that Taffy would have been uh, safer on the leash. I don't know. Maybe you could have yanked her. I don't know. But, you know, you can't do that. You, and you, you shouldn't do that. And when you do that, you share the responsibility of the injuries and the cost and stuff like that. Because you can't let your dog off leash either. Ms. Murph, what's going on? You have not one but two pit bulls. And according to the neighbors and according to the plaintiffs, your pit bulls get out all the time. That is so not true. Okay, um, Your Honor, on this particular day, I bring my pit bulls out of the house and I chain them up to my railing on my porch. Just as I was coming out the door, James and Taffy was coming down the street. I didn't see them because I have a high bush on my right hand side. But other than that, that's when Diamond ran down the steps. And she ran up to James and Taffy. She started spatting Taffy around like it was like a little mouse or something. And James started hitting her with the stick. I screams out, pick Taffy up. Well, he has the leash around his neck. He says, I can't, I, I don't have the leash on. So I'm trying to run down the steps. And Champ was still in the house behind the door. I hadn't even brought him out yet. I can't bring two out at the same time. Um, so well, you can't bring one there, out at a singular time because the one that you brought out was supposed to be within your control and unable to flee. And she your was. Court. And she was. No, she, she wasn't was. because she, she got was, away from oh, you. She wasn't. Diamond never grabbed Taffy. It was not Diamond. Uh, James finally got Taffy in his arms but he was still swinging at Diamond with the stick and fell up backwards up Miss Ruby's steps. Okay. Okay, that's when I hollered out, Champ, help me. Champ is 13, Diamond is 10 years old. Champ comes So out, wait, you were asking, he's, he's wait, a wait, dog. is Champ a he, dog? Yes. You were I asking said, Champ, Champ help for me. help? Yes. How is to, Champ like, gonna help you, another pit bull? to get to distract Diamond. They've been together for 10 years. I've had him for 13, okay. half for 10. So, right. uh, Champ runs up and Diamond is still dancing around James. James has Taffy in his arms, laying on the steps. I couldn't get him, I couldn't get Taffy out. Champ reached in, grabbed Taffy, ran Taffy to the top of Miss Ruby steps and stood in front of Taffy. And Diamond, I was able to grab her. And then I said, I gave James back Taffy. And that's exactly what happened. So how did Taffy get so injured? Because Taffy had to have stitches and everything Taffy else. Taffy only had one puncture wound. Right. But that's it. I'm saying from one dog. It wasn't Well, both I know, dogs and that's where the $761.86 no, in not. vet bills no, comes in. No, that is not. Miss Wanda and them let Taffy bleed out all Do night. Do you see the pictures? I came over. Do you over. see the pictures I have I here? I took Taffy. Yes, that's after she was that? shaved off. Yes, yes. So I took Miss Wanda to four different veterinarians. They said they did not do sutures there or whatever. So I wouldn't stop. I kept, cause I felt bad for the dog. What am I looking at there, James? James. What is that? You didn't a, even. Is it a, a scrape on my left knee? Is uh, That's your knee? Yeah, okay. excuse me. Yes, ma'am. And that's but, falling full. But how did you? Stop, listen, listen. Your pit bulls got out, your pit bulls attacked, that guy got hurt, and the dog had to have $700 worth of vet bills. Maybe the rest of the world doesn't have to guard against your negligence. Maybe you shouldn't be negligent because pit bulls get out. Pit, well, pit bulls get out. People let pit bulls get out. I don't know why. Almost all of my cases are pit bulls, okay? And it's not a problem with the pit bull, it's a problem with the owner. We don't punish the animal for being an animal, we punish the owner for not appropriately curtailing their animals, okay?
So let's talk about your responsibility, James, because part of this happened Ms. because the dog wasn't on a leash and you weren't able to scoop her up and quickly get her out of harm's way. You get that, right? That part of it is yes, because your dog was off leash too. Okay. All right. Well, when you yes. take responsibility, that means right. uh, that you end up sharing the um, the expenses in the case. So I know what your expenses are. Uh, James and Wanda are suing. James is suing for pain and suffering for his injuries, and Wanda's suing for the vet bills. And on the counterclaim, you actually, Ms. Murph, are suing them. Your two pit bulls get out, create havoc on a human and a dog, and you are suing them. Let's talk about that. You want $2,580 paid to you. You want the $80 vet bill you paid the first day, the antibiotics and the gas money, and your lost wages. And you want all that why? Because all of this could have been prevented. If Taffy weren't allowed to run between the rails and go on to everybody else's porch without a leash while my dogs is chained up on the porch and provoke them. Yeah, but them, your dogs weren't chained up. What all reality of this are you started. living in? Your dogs were not chained no, up on listen, the porch. This, that, and your dogs got the to the street. And this happened in the street. This did not happen on your front porch. Don't be silly. All right. Now, dog pain and suffering. What's a dog pain and suffering? Your pit bull being whacked on the head with a stick by a guy who's being attacked by the pit bull? He was not being attacked. James has been in the house with my dog. Everybody knows my dogs. My dogs are not vicious pit bulls. They are friendly with everyone in the neighborhood. Your Honor, I submitted evidence of Lisa's dog. There's a video of her dog. I opened my door perhaps two, three o'clock in the morning. It was in the summer, it was last summer. I opened my door. Her dog is standing on my porch at my door, looking at me. I was about to go outside on my porch. Uh, Lisa's dogs has been uh, loose as recently as Valentine's Day. Champ is so um, scared to go outside. This as well as three weeks ago. Now, Lisa allows her dogs to urinate and defecate on her porch because she no Look longer wants This is so interesting. Just a second. What exactly just happened there? The, which pit bull I, is this? Is this Champ? That's the, Diamond. That's no, the female Champ dog, Diamond. Diamond. Diamond is Diamond, Diamond is, is literally dog. roaming loose. loose, but Diamond is on the front porch, and you open the door and put Diamond and Taffy near each other like that while they're both yeah. growling. That's fascinating. No. That's no, what I'm telling you. Judge Millian, there's a, that a security door. Come to my porch that's, that's all the time. Guys, that's everybody stop talking. Dog. I'm ready. I'm done. I'm done. Stick a fork in me. I am so done. Listen up. Gangster. Everybody stop talking. Listen. 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 Curb your dogs. Have your dog in control. If that's the law for me, it's the law for you too. Enough is enough, okay? Especially when you have pit bulls. You have to be extra careful because if you can't afford the $1,000 bill, you can't afford the pit bulls, all right? Now, this is half your fault, James, for, putting her off le for taking her off leash. I realize it was a house away, but you are in exactly the same position as she is in as regards the damages. Yes. So here's what's gonna happen. I find in your favor, Ms. Wanda, on the vet bill, $761.86. I find in your favor, James, for pain and suffering, based on what I saw, uh, not in the amount that you're asking for, but I'm going to order her to pay you $500 in pain and suffering. I am going to find that you are, both Mr. James and Ms. Murph are equally responsible for what ended up happening here. And I'm ordering Ms. Murph to pay half of those damages, which amounts to $632 net judgment in favor of the plaintiffs in this case. That is my judgment. Good luck, folks. And on your counterclaim, here's a big fat surprise, zero. So the plaintiffs are partially responsible here, therefore they don't get everything they were seeking, but they do get uh, 600 and some odd dollars from, uh, from the defendant. Ms. Murphy, let me ask you, you, you didn't get anything for your uh, countersuit, but what about uh, the judge's decision? You, what are you thinking? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it was fair because 
they laid there, they let their dog lay there and bleed out all night long. It was me that attempted to make right. To be honest with you, my pit bull can yank me, yank off at any time. And they knew it. It's not like I was walking them somewhere. I was coming out my door. That's all I got to say. All right. Okay. As the judge said, if you can't pay the thousand bucks or whatever it is, you shouldn't have the pit bulls. You got to learn. A little late, though, for you. All right, uh, Wanda, James, you heard the judge and her decision. Uh, I know, James, you, you agree. You're partially responsible because she was off the leash. Your pup was. Yes. So uh, you have to bear the responsibility for that. What are you thinking right now? Yes, and I do. And I do take responsibility for not having her on the leash, as I was supposed to. It's just messed up that it came to this. By the way, how is Taffy right now? She's, she's doing much, fine. Yes, she's much better. All I wanted was fair resolution. That's all I asked her for was half of the bill because I knew that we assumed needed to assume the responsibility for taking her off of the leash. Um, I, I wish her no animosity. Just want our dogs to stay away from one another. Listen, good luck to you. I hope the pup's okay. And, Thank you. Uh, be more careful next time, all right? Okay, Doug, so look, the leash law is everything in a case like this. Um, if you have one dog on a leash and another dog not on a leash, and there is a fight, the owner of the dog off leash is gonna lose the case. This is a different situation. This is one where both dogs are off leash and therefore both have some culpability, or at least the owners do, clearly. The dogs are not responsible, it's the owners. So in a situation like that, uh, here the judge said, look, this is 50-50 liability. Um, it doesn't have to be 50-50, a judge could say, that it's 60-40, there's no magic in 50-50. Situation like this, it feels right because both dogs committed or both owners committed the same offense. The question is, what's your favorite board game? My favorite board game? I'm not Cuban like you, so I wasn't born to play dominoes. Oh, we are that, really good at dominoes. We play dominoes at least once a week at my Thursday. mother's house. And it's funny because my mother will like ask the same questions over and over. She's right. kind of getting on in years. She's 95. But boy, you put her at a domino table. Oh, man. Isn't it nutty? She's a shark. She is a shark. She it's is amazing. Getting beat down every Thursday. And I believe it keeps her sharp, you know? Year old. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> over and over. <laughs> But as far as board games that we play around the house... $100,000 Pyramid. Yes, in, in our That's game it. closet we have Pyramid. We have Scrabble and we have Pyramid. I was on that show. And you were good. And I went to the winner's circle yes. each time. Yes. And I brought the, the prize home for each person That's there. That's right. Man, those, those people got to call you again. You got to get back on Pyramid. Yeah. Is that your... Do you want to hear something funny? When I was preparing for that show, uh, I was uh, I was at one of my law school roommates' houses in D.C. Right, visiting, right. And my other law school roommate came over to pick me up and go to lunch, and she goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm watching Pyramid. Why? Because um, I'm going to be on it. She says, what are you going to do with the money if you win? I said, I'm the celebrity. You know? <laughs> she got totally B-listed. Totally B-listed by my good friend. Uh -huh. <laughs>